Hi. I look at online synth groups sometimes. They can be good pools of knowledge for people when looking to accomplish things musically. One thing I notice occasionally is that many patch questions tend to get answered by a list of modules that can accomplish the task. It makes sense, of course. These days, there are so many modules available that if you're looking for something to accomplish a specific task in a patch, you might be able to find a module that's designed to do exactly that task. But in so many cases, you can perform tasks using modules you already have, and usually the true answer to how do I do X is not buy X module, but rather use X technique. Because any module that performs any task is really doing the same thing any other module is doing. It's generating or modifying voltage. So the questions to ask anytime you have a patching conundrum are how do you want that voltage to behave? and under what circumstances. To demonstrate, let's have a look at the concept of sequence ratcheting. This is a popular technique, and we've even shown a couple ways to do it on the channel in the past. But let's break it down into its components. Typically what people mean by ratcheting is that on particular steps of a sequence, multiple node events happen at the same pitch instead of just the typical one per step. So let's look at what we need in order to accomplish this and figure out how to put it together. First, we know we need a sequence. This means a clock to the sequencer input, which steps through discrete values that emerge as control voltage from the sequencer output. We also know we need notes, which means a VCO sequenced by the sequence and gated by a VCA. The crux here is the ratcheting itself, which will be a stream of gates that is sometimes faster than the sequence clock. These gates will open the VCA that creates the notes. And finally, we need a way to determine when and how fast the ratcheting will occur. This means another sequential output that is timed to the main one. So we'll start with the notes. I'm going to use a maths channel for my sequence clock here. I've set up the channel so that the rise time is pretty quick and the duration of the clocks mostly comes with the fall time. This means the end of rise gate will be high most of the time and only go low momentarily before the next clock comes in. Now let's take the gate output from this channel of Rene and use it to generate notes. Notice that the gates are wide and loud, and this doesn't sound great right now, but it's going to be good for the patch, because instead of using this gate to generate these notes directly, I'm gonna use it to turn the ratcheting on and off. So let's patch it instead to the Maths Channel 4 cycle input, and take the Unity out to generate the notes. more nuance to the note. It has a decay, but is otherwise the same. If we change the cycle time of the maths, we can create different rhythmic flourishes. For example, we can select between different cycle times using different tuned voltages from pressure points. automate and randomize this by using that same gate to clock the woggle bug. We'll take the stepped output, attenuate it a little bit, and then use it to change the speed of the cycle that we're creating with each gate.
I'm also gonna molt the gate one more time to the trigger input of this math channel. This will cause the cycle to reset right as the gate goes high and keep the initial event of each gate synced up with it. Put in a supplemental voice to add a little texture. I'll turn on sync on VCO A so that it's always already in tune with the main voice. about patch programming like this is that in the process of discovering or uncovering techniques, certain things about the way I've patched will lead me to new ideas that may not have been part of the original idea. For example, when creating these notes with the channel 4 function, uh, what if instead of the channel output we use the sum out? Then we can use the slower function from our leading clock to interact with the function that creates the notes, inverting it. This pulls their level down periodically and adds dynamic changes to the rhythmic changes. We also get different results with different settings of the offset from channel 2. already using these two functions for independent things, it was just a matter of thinking to move the cable over a couple of jacks to the left. Just to be clear, I'm not saying if you want to do ratcheting, you need to buy a max. What I'm saying is that in a typical modular system, there's almost always at least one way to accomplish whatever patching goal you're aiming at, and that different methods lead not only to different results, but also to different possibilities for extending the patch in new directions. ratcheting patch, we asked, how do we want the voltage to behave and under what circumstances? We set up the circumstances and routed the signals to make it happen. To borrow one of my favorite phrases from Tony, we programmed our synth with patch cables. When we do patch programming, as opposed to selecting predetermined modes, we even have some flexibility to break down assumptions about the patch technique that we're using. For example, the ratcheting concept always has the notes start out right at the beginning of the sequence step, and while they change from step to step, they're always the same length for the duration of each step. How would you expand on this concept? Have you ever figured out a patching conundrum in a similar way? Let us know in the comments.